Good day to everybody and welcome to the Texas Real Estate Show. And this is where we discuss the market, uh, the current real estate market in Texas, um, and also anybody looking to get into the real into real estate, whether you're an investor, whether you're a new agent wanting to get into the business, this is where you meet the experts. Um, if you have any questions, we will have a Q&A at the very end uh, of the call. Um, First of all, let me introduce my uh, one of my co-hosts, James Lee from FNN Corp. How are you doing, James, today? It's James Lee. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, Lee Group Loans right here. And Found James. on all social media stuff. I'm here. And James. James is also my co-host on the Olympian table. Um, we, we air that on Wednesdays at uh, 10 o'clock. So hopefully you can join that channel as well and learn more about us. James, tell us what type of loans you do. What do you do? Residential and commercial? Yes, residential and commercial. Any, any loan you, you need, just call me. We can discuss the details. Don't 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 uh, get caught up in the minutia. If you need money, use my money. Don't use your money. Can I come to you for some money, James? You, you can. You have to qualify, though. Oh, that's the problem. It's not free money. You do have to qualify. There are parameters okay. surrounding okay. it. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get into politics, and I'm not, not going to say yeah. that we like the government where we just give the money away. But... All I can say is, and to my left, I have Mr. Dennis Shelton. Good morning. And Dennis is actually uh, head of our commercial department uh, over at Century 21 Olympian. So tell us a bit about yourself, Dennis. Well, actually, I'm a real estate agent, have, have been one for quite some time now. Um, as, I, as Steve said, I head, head up the commercial team. Uh, pretty exciting time in commercial right now. It is. What's the, what's, what's, what's the market like there? We'll get onto that a little bit later on, but tell us, what's the market like at the moment? The sound is not good. So I don't know what you got to do with here. Okay, we've got you back on. Oh, okay. Perhaps, Can you hear me now? Perhaps it's better off without having any sound. But no, what go. I have to say is important. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I see I'm in trouble. This is what everybody's tuning in been waiting to hear. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, that, that's that's good for the channel, I guess. And we have a guest today. We're very uh, in a very lucky position to have a gentleman from Century Twenty One Corporate. His name is Casey Reed. He's even cancelled an, uh, another mo another meeting from Century Twenty One to be with us. Uh, and he's the growth consultant for Texas, Louisiana. So my qualifications, I actually got into this, uh, this particular line of work. I was a broker owner of a Century 21 franchise in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, now with that, I had a couple of partners that were, they were brokers of their own firm that was in Arkansas. And I was actually living in and the one running our company that was in Shreveport. Um, during my time there, I uh, began to specialize in mergers and acquisitions with other companies. Um, as we looked at trying to grow, I looked at it a couple of ways. You know, you can recruit agents all day long, but the fastest way to grow a company is to just go buy uh, another company that has a bunch of agents already and bring them on board. And of course, effectively for us, it doubled the size of our company overnight. And that's when the real work begins and trying to make sure that everybody's happy and that you've got a culture um, that everyone likes. But uh, that's what I specialized in. And I did that up until the point to where um, my business consultant at the time, growth consultant, um, actually started talking to me about coming to work on the corporate side of things. And so it was a good opportunity for my family and I both um, to do that. And I came on board with Century 21 then, and then actually left the organization for about 10 years just due to the amount of travel that is required in this job. And things are a lot different now because we've got great technology, um, such as what we're using today. I mean, you can get on Zoom calls and have face-to-faces um, that just gives you a little bit better meeting than a phone call would. So the travel has gone down. But in the 10 years that I was gone, I was a financial advisor. Uh, I did financial planning for individuals um, and companies as well. But I finally got the chance to come back to Century 21, uh, come back to work as a growth consultant. Real estate's in my blood. It's something that I'm very passionate about. 
and I've uh, been back with the company for about a year now. Oh, yeah, congratulations. I just want to say that um, this particular channel is not just going to be a Century 21 channel. We are going to invite, you know, other companies in that uh, just to get their perspective as well. And we, as I said, we, we're sort of very lucky to get you on the channel today. Um, Casey, what other companies did you have, you know, experience with? I'm sorry, Stephen, could you repeat that? I couldn't quite hear it. Then what, what other companies did you have any experience with? Well, um, so on the real estate side of things, I actually got into the business um, in the early 2000 timeframe. Um, I was in work in telecommunications uh, in the cellular telephone business and decided I needed a change. And I jumped into real estate uh, in the early 2000s and started with an independent um, in Louisiana. And then I moved into the commercial line of work um, and was working with uh, another independent, Falcon Foster. But I did a lot of work with the uh, larger commercial companies uh, just on co-broking things such as the C.B. Richard Ellis's or the Jones Lang LaSalle's. Um, when I left the real estate business um, for the last 10 years, I was actually working with a lot of banks. I was a financial advisor at Chase uh, JP Morgan Chase, as well as um, Capital One. And um, with them, you know, doing the investing, I actually got into the insurance side of business too. You know, it all ties together. And so much of what we do, there's so many different hands that are in the, the pot. And so I've got a little bit of experience with all, all of those things. Franchise, you know, a franchise real estate agent and, a, a, and a, you know, and a franchise such as C21, what, what do you think the one of the biggest oh, differences? So that's a great question um, because I started my career again as an independent. And um, for me, it, it's two things that you get. It's instantaneous credibility and instantaneous validation to the client that you know what you're doing because of the resources that are available to you uh, as part of a franchise company you know, the public doesn't understand the blurred lines about what some of the companies are. But what they do know is the national name of Century 21. And with that, again, it's just instantaneous validation. Um, the other, I think, one of the biggest perks of it is just the referral network. I mean, we've got an opportunity to get referrals in from all over the world. And, you know, real estate now, we used to say real estate is local, real estate is local, real estate is local, the three rules of, rules of real estate, right? Well, now, because of technology, real estate is global. And I think especially for you guys there in Houston, I mean, you're an international city. And um, I was doing a training with another company uh, not that long ago. And I just asked them, I said, raise your hand if 80% of your clients are clients that you didn't have a clue who they were before. And if they came, in, came to you from maybe out of this country, a vast majority of their clients uh, were international clients, folks that were new to the country, um, folks that were coming in that they had not done business with, that were not in their, maybe their basic sphere of influence, if you will. Um, so I think that just shows, you know, more and more the power behind having a franchise name behind you versus just being independent out there trying to, to make it on your own. Uh, now I'm going into the nitty gritty of the meeting. What do you think about the last three years that we've had? I mean, I'm going to bring James in a little bit with some of the challenges we've had and, and Dennis. Um, what's your feeling on the last three years? Let's talk about the residential part of the business first. You bet. Um, I think the last three years have uh, certainly been a high for the real estate business. Now, I, you know, my personal opinion, and because I've been around for a while, I think that a lot of people have gotten into the business because it's easy, um, so to speak, because it, it's, you know, the sales have been so fast and, and especially there in Texas, you guys have seen just a tremendous uptick in the number of sales, as well as the average sales price is just going through the roof. And so I think that there's been a lot of people um, that have always, you know, maybe wanted to do something different and gotten into the business. And that takes a little bit away from some of the long time, the, the lifers uh, of this, this particular industry. Um, folks that have you know, been doing this or plan on staying in this business for a while. I think that we're gonna see changes on the back end of this as this wave uh, begins to crest 
then that's where I think we'll see a lot of people actually get out of the business. And those that have got the really good basic fundamentals are going to be the ones still doing this, you know, five, six, seven years from now. Now, I'm going to have to bring my, my good fellow James in here. What's your feeling on the last three years, James? Um, it's been a bit of a, a seesaw, um, a roller coaster, so to speak. And, and kind of to, to Casey's point, the um, the market has been now, as of late, um, saturated with people that are doing business because it's been so easy. You don't even really have to work or haven't had to work to sell a now, house. When you say when you say people, you, so you're talking about real estate new, agents, new or you're agent. talking loan officers? Well, our, our job is not easy at all. <laughs> let's, let's get that straight. <laughs> it is not easy. Um, well, when agents specifically get into the, the into the business, passing the test and getting out there and, and selling the house. Um, uh, logistically, right? We know that you can buy a house without a real estate agent, but if you're smart, you need to get a real estate agent to do it because that you need someone to guide you just as much. Um, we've seen what Amber Heard and Johnny Depp are going through. They need lawyers because you look like a fool up there trying to represent yourself, right? But um, with that said, there have been people coming into the, this business doing it, thinking it's easy. And I think we'll see a shift because it's getting tough to do business now. Um, yes, even with, with the prices of, of homes and the interest rates going up, you got to be creative. This is not one of those, you know, black and white kind of deals. You got to figure out, do I need to put more earnest money down? Do I need to shorten the option period? Do I need to, um, you know, change the underwriting timing or whatever the case is to get that deal accepted? So we're going to, it'll separate the men from the boys, so to speak, during this type of market. But before, it's been easy. The past three years, man, even during COVID, when we thought that it was going to be tough to do business, um, but they made real estate essential. So we never stopped. And I had one of my best years during that time, even not being able to go out. Really? Through people. COVID, absolutely. you had one of your best years? Absolutely. Because it was easy. It was easy. The rates were low. It, it, it doesn't take much to sell an almost free loan. I mean, the interest rates were so low. Um, it was there were so that, but now the people that are in the market now to buy homes have never seen interest rates above five percent. So it's sticker shock for them. So you have to figure out a way to make yourself different, to make yourself stand out from everyone else, to say, hey, you know what? This person, um, they need to buy a house, but they want to wait because they're waiting for the market to crash or they're waiting for the bottom to fall out. Well, let me tell you, it ain't happening. Um, not not the way you think it's going to happen. Um, but, you know, that's that's just my opinion. I don't have a crystal ball or a Ouija board or anything to say that, you know, my word is the gospel. But I do know that it'll be a shift and we'll see some people in this business now that won't be in this business next year. Really? I agree with you totally on that, James. Yeah, that's 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 pretty significant. You heard it here first, sir. We did, I, I, no, no, no. We heard it from James Lee first. You had it. And over, over on the commercial side, what, what's your feeling on that, Dennis? Uh, for the real estate market, uh, I think over the last three years, things have kind of went gangbusters, especially here in our local market. There's, it's like James uh, mentioned, it's been pretty uh, easy to, to sell a property, multiple offers on properties uh, and things of that nature. But I think um, as Casey spoke, as as time goes on, um, the people that have systems in place are going to be the ones who's going to last uh, in this market. Because I think now that we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown uh, in and, and actually having more availability of properties out there now because I think um, I've seen a statistic that showed that uh, year over year new homes were down sales were down 22 percent and I mean that's a pretty and that was actually a, a nor uh, statistic so nationwide down 22 percent and that becomes pretty significant but I think the people that have systems in place and are able to weather the storm and have learned and position themselves, I think they'll still do well in the real estate industry. And when you're talking about systems, you're talking about systems that help the clients? Uh, absolutely. Uh, also, it's helping the agent as well uh, for his marketing, obtaining new clients. And I think James mentioned something about uh, people can buy 
my house uh, without an agent. And yeah, that's all well and fine until something goes wrong. And then you look back in hindsight and say, hey, I wish I would have had someone to tell me or uh, to watch out for that that landmine that's out there. Uh, and even when he, uh, we talked about the, the different types of loans that are out there, what would be best uh, for you. And I think in making this type of purchase, people would do wise to have a professional on their side well, to assist with that. Especially with commercial. Especially commercial. Because, you know, there's so many different strategies that people use to buy a commercial building. What's your experience, Casey, with commercial in relation to what? what, what if you was looking for a real estate agent now and you was looking for, and you're an investor and you're looking for a commercial agent, what would, what would you be looking for if you were selecting an agent? Well, um, knowledge is one of the first and foremost things, but it also depends upon the price range that we're looking uh, into. And the reason I say that is one of the big initiatives that uh, our company, Century 21, has been undertaking since 2011 is actually growing our commercial department. And, you know, what we found is that most of the big commercial companies, if the sales price is below two and a half million dollars they don't want to fool with it they don't want anything to do with it so that is a huge opportunity um that's out there for our you know residential brokerages to add that to add commercial sales as part of their uh their business to increase their bottom line but then you want to look for that knowledge making sure that that agent you know is going to be able to help you if it's uh, lease negotiations, you know, explaining what a triple net lease is. If it's going to be a build out, you know, what are tenant improvements? What are they going to be on the hook for? Just making sure that that agent is going to be able to communicate that experience to the client because a lot of folks, they just don't know what they don't know. So that's a bit of a statement. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good statement. So, you know, obviously it's very important for them to have that knowledge. Um, so what sort of questions would you ask? Would you ask an agent if you was an investor and you was coming into the business? What sort of questions would you ask or so I, were looking for? But what would you? What would oh, you? I, I'd ask them simply, you know, how many of these transactions have they performed? I mean, what, you know, what makes you a local expert? How many of these within the local area? Um, and you know, who are some of your, maybe some of your past clients that you've helped, um, would they give you a recommendation to work with me? He's obviously important. What do you think century 21 have changed to make that easier for the agent that may, so, be, that may be looking to get into commercial real estate? That's a great question. Um, we actually have a program now that is called, you can get a certification, a Century 21 commercial designation of the in com Commercial Investment Network, a CIN. And we launched this designation within 2011. And there's a criteria that, you know, you have to do, but it's really not a difficult criteria if someone has, you know, some sales experience in this. But what we would do is we would get Randy Workman, who is our senior director of um, business momentum is specifically he focuses on the commercial business. He actually started this. He's developed a 42 hour training uh, for these agents, which is called advanced commercial advisor training. And it's something that, you know, is just very beneficial. It, it arms them with what they need. Um, and then he would coordinate with that company too, just to arrange what we call a commercial onboarding to make sure that, you know, all the agents understand what's available to them from the training aspect as well as from the referral aspect as well. The group of guys that you were thinking, please tell them that uh, we'd like them on the program as well. Um, Absolutely. And I'd like to thank them personally for being able to get you on. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, you know, and everything you've done and helped us at Century 21 Olympian. And we, you know, hopefully it's not too long before I see you again. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I, thank you, Austin. Appreciate nice you so you. much. Thanks a lot, Casey. Good luck and stay healthy. You bet. And for you, Dennis, thanks again. Appreciate you as well. Appreciate you having me. And my co-host over here. Yeah, I man. I appreciate no, you, James. This was good. We'll see how this goes. Um, we, 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 who we have on, you never know. Yeah, thanks right. a lot. All right. We all